Welcome to my second monthly reads video. In this series I go through the books that I've been reading over the past month and give them a brief review. I hope you enjoy. So the first book I read in September was Angel of Storms. This book was quite good. The pace was a lot quicker than the last book, which I enjoyed a bit more. Um, we meet the characters five years on from where we last saw them, so that was quite nice to have some sort of character progression that we didn't necessarily see in the novel. They were a little bit more mature, I'd say mostly Riel had matured, and that was quite good, but then both of them seemed to develop this moral dilemma throughout this book that was a little bit off-putting and something unusual for a fantasy series. So that was something that, you know, I wasn't quite sure about. The moral dilemma that both of these characters face is, is that they have this huge reluctance to kill. Even when they're involved in these massive battles and those around them are dying and getting seriously hurt, they still keep agonising over this same question, should I kill or should I not? And it just becomes a bit laborious after you've heard it the first three times. I feel like the overall story of this novel was a lot more compact and straightforward than in the previous one and it was nice to see the two characters converging in a way that we didn't quite expect so that was really good also i feel like perhaps though it could have done with being extended over perhaps two novels but having read the rest of the series i understand why that wasn't done but overall i enjoyed it overall the pace was good there were some nice characters introduced that again popped up throughout the rest of the series as opposed to the characters that we saw in the first novel which we never meet again which is a little bit you know you kind of get attached to characters and then they disappear and that was just something that was a bit odd in September was Successor's Promise. This book started off a little bit slow, again it was five years from where we last left off in the last book, so it was nice to have that as a consistent thing, but other than that there's not really a lot I can say about this one. I didn't enjoy it as much as the last one, I felt the last one had a far more compact story. This one felt a little bit all over the place and it also felt like some bits were rushed, like she wasn't taking as much time over the characters. And also the pressing question that we wanted to be answered since the very first book seems to have kind of been forgotten and pushed into the background and although these characters seem to act like they should be taking this question seriously, they're not really and I don't know, that just, I'm not gelling with this series the way that I thought I would and it just seems a real shame. There's some really good characters that come back in this story and I feel like perhaps maybe if it was told from some of their perspectives then I'd be enjoying it more. It's just the two main characters again, this moral dilemma that they have keeps cropping up and in some ways it's really starting to irritate me now, this whole sort of like, we can't do this, we can't do that, because, you know, we weren't brought up to feel that way. And I get that, that's how they were brought up, but they're kind of in a life or death situation and they're refusing to take it seriously, is kind of how I feel. So, overall, it was okay, it was a nice stepping stone to the next story, but probably not a book I'll jump to read again even though this is the second time I've read it and it really didn't improve on a second read, so. I finally got to the last book in the series, Maker's Curse, and yeah. It wasn't great. I expected a lot more. The 
interesting question that I've been waiting since the first book to be answered was literally answered in the space of a page and it was kind of like oh it doesn't matter we're not bothered by it and that kind of disappointed me a lot it felt rushed like there was a really good story plot in this but it kind of dragged on slow 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 and then suddenly big battle all over done and it just felt I didn't invest in it because of that and that just feels such a shame. It does have some great writing and there are some wonderful characters in here but I'm just not invested in those characters. Like I said about Successor's Promise, the characters that are the side characters are the ones that I'd like the story to be told from. These two main characters, Tyon and Riel, are in a way I feel kind of selfish, like they're hooked up in their own ideas and their own thoughts and they don't seem to view themselves as a part of the whole universe, they sort of see themselves as these solo people. Which is kind of normal, but for a big fantasy novel like this it would be nice for them to have a bit more spatial awareness of themselves with others, even though they do have that, but it's mixed with this strange moral dilemma again. The moral dilemma keeps coming back with these two characters and it just doesn't work for me and that's unfortunately how I feel. But overall, it was okay. You know, I do really enjoy Trudy Canavan's books. I just feel that it wasn't her best work and, you know, that's just a shame. After reading lots of fantasy novels that were very modern, I decided that I would go and read something that was completely opposite, and that was the major works of Byron. <laughs> I absolutely love Byron's poetry, and I have got quite a few books with sections in of his work, and also I have books of his letters and journal entries and things like that, so I am a big fan. And I'm just going to say this, if you like romantic poetry, this is, this is what you need to read. It's incredibly complex and very political in places. And it's also quite scathing of, you know, the time and people of the time. So, you know, he, Byron is very aware and it's amazing to read something from somebody who is so sort of politically and culturally and emotionally aware of what is happening around him. I think probably my favourite poems would be Don Juan. It kind of has to be Don Juan because the fact that it just leaves you on that cliffhanger like what happened? I want to know what happens next in Don Juan but unfortunately he died so he didn't finish it so yeah, we, we don't know what happened. I, I like this collection because it has lots of little short poetry in it as well. And some of his short poetry is absolutely beautiful, you know. It's not as heavy going as his really long poems. And it just, you know, feels you light and refreshed, even though it's quite dark and heavy in its subject matter. But yeah. There is so much more I could say about Byron, but I think that would require a video of its own just because of the sheer volume of work he created. But the last thing I will say is that if you're unsure whether you like poetry or not, then definitely read Byron because his work will probably surprise you. So, those are all the books that I've read over the past month. If you've read them too, then I'd really like to know what you thought of them in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Nude with the Millennium Rules. Brother. Millennium Rules! Millennium's Rule series.